Egg donation is probably the most successful IVF treatment there is. If you are thinking about becoming an egg donor, there is much you should know. Learn what you need on today's episode of Infertility TV. If you are a woman looking to donate your eggs, or a woman who is looking for an egg donor, check out IVF1Match.com or just click the link in the description. It's completely free to use. So you are thinking about donating your eggs. Congratulations, it's a very noble, selfless thing to do. Make sure you really want to do it. Donating the eggs is not nearly as easy as donating sperm, so you should be sure it's the right choice for you. Because it's more difficult, egg donors can ask for compensation for going through the process. If you discuss this decision with others, keep in mind that people sometimes have very strong opinions about egg donation. In particular, some very religious folks really don't like egg donation, or any type of IVF for that matter. They would like to scare you into not being an egg donor. This video will just concentrate on medical facts, not scare tactics. Remember, it's your body, so it's your choice. Who would make a good egg donor? First of all, fertility decreases with age, so the best egg donors are young. You have to be at least 18 years old, but ideally under the age of 25. It is okay to donate if you're older than that, but the chances for success will go down. You shouldn't have any history of infertility yourself. You should be normal or near normal weight. It doesn't matter whether you've been pregnant or had a baby before. If you're using any hormone-based contraceptives like birth control pills or hormone-containing implants, you'll have to remove them before donating. To become a donor, you will need to fill out an extensive medical history and family medical history. Many donors will be rejected at this stage. Don't take it personally. The FDA has a lot of very strict rules about all types of donation. Based on your answers, you may simply not qualify. It is not a reflection of you. If you are accepted and you are not donating for a specific person, then you'll be put into a database so that potential recipients can identify the type of donor they would like. Recipients are usually looking to match your characteristics with the recipients. The most common features that they are looking to match are race, height, weight, hair color, and eye color. Once a recipient has selected you, or if you are donating for a specific person, the next step is testing. In this phase, you will have a consultation and physical with a doctor, have a bunch of blood tests, and a vaginal ultrasound. There are several things that we are looking for here. We want to make sure that you don't have any infectious diseases, that your ovaries seem like they will respond well to fertility medications, and you don't have any medical problems that would be affected by the process. Again, don't feel badly if you get rejected based on your test results. Okay, if you made it past those first two stages, you are finally ready to start the egg donation treatment. To do this, you're going to need to take injections of fertility medications for a couple of weeks. Don't worry, you will be taught how to do this by the doctor's office. It is not difficult. While you are taking the medications at home in the evenings, you will need to be monitored in the doctor's office in the mornings. This will happen every few days, which is very inconvenient. If your schedule doesn't allow for this, then don't donate. You can't miss monitoring appointments. This is for your safety and to maximize the chances for a successful egg retrieval. Removing the eggs is called an egg retrieval, and during this procedure you will receive anesthesia medication through an IV in your arm so that you are completely asleep. The egg retrieval lasts about 15 to 20 minutes. The doctor will remove the eggs by passing a long needle through the vagina into the ovaries under ultrasound guidance. Then that's it. Your egg donation experience is done. You will be taken to the recovery area and after an hour or so you can go home. You will need somebody who can drive you home because of the anesthesia. You will need to rest for the remainder of the day. The next day you can resume your normal activities. So what are the possible risks of egg donation? Number one, will fertility medications cause cancer? 
Some studies involving patients with infertility seem to show a higher risk of ovarian cancer later in life. However, infertility patients already have a higher risk for ovarian cancer, so it's unclear if there is any added risk from the medications themselves. Some studies did not find any additional risk beyond infertility. There is no evidence that fertility medications increase the risk for any other cancer, including colon cancer. This does not mean that you have no chance for getting colon cancer. It means that being a donor won't increase your risk. Number two, overstimulating the ovaries. This is known as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. This is a real risk. With hyperstimulation, you can experience abdominal bloating or pain, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, and other problems. There is a higher risk for getting blood clots. Your doctor will take a number of steps to try to prevent you from developing this problem, but it's still possible. Fortunately, it is a rare complication. For egg donors, only one in 500 women may develop it. If you do, your doctor will discuss different ways to get it better faster. It always gets better, it's just a matter of how quickly and how miserable you are until then. Number three, the egg retrieval. There are a couple of risks here to be aware of. The risk of getting anesthesia, which should be low. The risk for infection or bleeding, and the risk of damaging something with the needle. The overall risk for any of these complications is about 1%. Finally, I am often asked whether being an egg donor will reduce your own chance for having a baby when you are ready. The good news is that the answer based on studies so far is no. If everything goes okay, most programs will let you donate up to six times. I put a link in the description below for an excellent information resource for egg donors. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments. We will answer. If you like this video, remember to like this video. Do you have a question? Leave it in the comments below. Become a subscriber and get new episodes of Infertility TV Weekly. Click the link in the description to visit our website where you can register to become a patient.